thank you, Abba Father, for this day. I thank you, Abba Father, that in this day we can just come before your throne of grace and we can just thank you, Father, for the work that you are doing in our lives. Father, I just want to thank you specifically in this day. And I just want to thank you, Father, that we can just come before you, Father, in humbling ourselves. And Father, I just want to thank you for your faithfulness as in this week's session we see the faithfulness of who you are, where in one chapter both promises of what you have spoken gets reinstated again. One comes to fulfillment, the second promise gets spoken again. And this is what we need to understand, that you are a faithful Yah. But the one thing that we will clearly understand is that you do things in your timing. You have a timing in when you want to do things. But we sometimes think that you are late. And I have understood that you're not always early. <laughs> but I understand that you are on time. And just like Abraham and Sarah would have thought that from the time that you gave the prophetic word, that it was too late. She was old. He was old. How were they going to bear a child in their old age? But Abba Father, I just want to thank you because you are so faithful. Because when you give a promise, surely it shall come to pass. No matter what it is that we go through in the circumstances within our lives and in all things, we are being tested to be able to see that we would stay faithful to you no matter what. And even in our failures of being faithful and sometimes we take detours and we have seen Abraham and how he has taken many detours and he's got a child that came with Hagar that was now not your purpose and not your plan and then he has gone twice into a place of where he said that his wife is his sister because of the fear of man that he has but even in the midst of all that Abraham has said and done. You are faithful. And this is what we need to understand. In the midst of all that man says and does, you are faithful. And you will do what you said you will do. And what an encouragement that is today to understand that you start with us in the beginning of this Bible as being the Aleph, as being our Father, as being our Creator, as being the beginning of all things, as revealing yourself to us as the leader, the, the strong one, the ox, the one who is the leader, the one who has the strength, Al Shaddai himself. And then you will end with us as the Tav, in the book of Revelation, where we see Yahushua, the one who was pierced, the one who gave up his life for our transgressions, so that in him we might have resurrection and life. And how wonderful it is to know that the promises that you have made in this Bible of his coming is surely going to come to pass. And the promises that come for the kingdom to come and the kingdom reign is going to stand. And how faithful you are. And all we need to do is be like Abraham. That even though we see the things that are there and even though we see things that are happening and even though we're going to be confronted with many trials and many tests as Abraham has been confronted. Your promises are true and they stand. And so even though there are many that will doubt because of things that are going to happen and there's going to be a great falling away. But there's going to be those that are going to look for the return of their king 
and they are going to be willing to stand no matter the trial, no matter the test, because their faith and their trust is on who he is. Not what he will do, but on who he is. And he is faithful. And he will do what he says he will do. And so, Abba Father, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Abba Father. I thank you for this, for your word and for the richness of your word and for your word being a strong tower that we can run into because you have laid out these foundations for us to know your heart and how you go about doing things because you have not left us in the lurch. You have not left us in the dark. But you have given us the light of your word to show us how you go about doing things. To show us your faithfulness. And Abraham is no different to, to who we are if we are called by your name. And each one of us has got a destiny and a purpose to fulfill in this time. And so I thank you, Abba. I thank you that you come and speak to our minds and speak to our hearts this evening. Open up the mind of our understanding so that we can surrender this earthly temple of ours to allow ourselves to be filled more and more with your presence. That we can become more and more those that will reflect the image of our Messiah on this earth. I praise and I thank you for this in Yahushua's name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Father as we continue in our story and our journey that we are journeying with Abraham. And what a powerful journey this is. And how faithful the Father is to be able to give us these written accounts to be able to be um, as a guidance for us to be able to understand that we know different to Abraham. We are no different to Abraham. Just as Abraham is a normal human being as we are and where he makes mistakes and where he wins victories, so we too are on our journey where we too will make mistakes, but we are also understanding that we too will have victory. And so we praise Abba Yahuwah for that, that Abba is faithful to be with us on this journey that we are on. For weeks we've been on this journey, drawing closer to the Father, knowing the Father's heartbeat. You see, do you see the richness of what we lose out if we only go and read the Bible from the New Testament. Do you see what we lose out on? We will lose out on so much if we're just going to read the New Testament. Because this is the thing. You see, the foundational covenant teaches us the Father's heartbeat. And that is what's important. Is that the Father wants to teach us His heartbeat. And he wants to reveal himself to us. And that is why it is so important that we are working through a foundational covenant to learn how Father reacts to things, to know his heart, to know the person who he is. Because you see, we have been given a New Testament, but we don't tend to want to go into the so-called Old Testament, which I call the foundational covenant. And then we want to build a house. But a house cannot be built on without having a foundation because we need a foundation in which to build a house. And so if we do not have a foundation, then the house is going to be built on, like Yeshua said in Matthew chapter 7, where he says you build a house on a foundation that when the storm comes and the rain comes and the, and, the, and the wind comes, it's going to be able to bring that house down. And so that is why 
many of us as believers have not gone and established ourselves in a foundational covenant in understanding the things that the father is speaking in this cover because everything from this uh, as we've looked and we've seen Noah he established a covenant with him Abraham he establishes a covenant with him when we're going to get to Moses we're going to understand he's going to establish a covenant again so at the end of the day we must understand that father is into wanting to establish covenant and it's all about a covenant people and so therefore how important is it that the father wants us to be able to understand these foundations that he's giving us in order for us to be able to come to know father's heart in a more profound way than just having this religious mindset of going to church and we listen to preaching but we're not going deep in a relationship with our father so i just want to quickly read from matthew chapter 7 because this is what i was talking here and let's read from matthew chapter 24 and it says therefore anyone who hears these words of mine so listen to what he says in matthew chapter 7 from verses 21 not everyone who says to me master master shall enter into the reign of the heavens. But he who is doing the desire of my Father who is in the heavens. So whose desire are we to be doing? We are to be doing the desire of the Father. The one who we are having him being revealed to us through the, the story of Abraham. And we are to have a relationship with Abba Yahuwah because Yeshua has brought us back to the Father. And the Father and the Son are one. So look what he says. Many shall say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. And we will understand these scriptures a little bit deeper in this discipleship um, manner from heaven group that we have been on on a journey we will understand this deeper and listen to what he says here therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and does them shall be like a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain came down and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock and if everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them shall be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And I listen, the rain came down and the floods came and the winds blew and they beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. Why? Because it had no foundation. That's why. So our roots need to go deep. And our roots need to go deep in our Messiah, who is the rock. But understand, our Messiah has a foundation himself that he stands by. And that's what we must understand. And we must understand the fullness of why Messiah came. What is the fullness of Messiah? Why did he say, you practice lawlessness? What did he mean by that? And so you see, Great was its fall, and great was its fall. And it came to be when Yahushua had ended these words that the people were astonished at his teachings, for he was teaching them as one possessing authority, not as the scribes. So you see, those scribes didn't possess any authority, but Yahushua possessed the authority, the authority that came from heaven. The authority that was given to him by his father. And so we need to understand that everything of what Yeshua has come to do. He says, I am the way. I am the life. I am the, the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the father except through me. So we ought to be returning back to the father and what the father loves and what's on the father's heart. And that is why the Father is revealing himself to us 
by understanding these foundations. Because the Father's revealing his heart to us. The Father's revealing his faithfulness to us. The Father's revealing he's going to reveal that he will test us. Oh, he tests us to test, to see what is on our hearts. Do we really obey what he says that we should obey? And he allows the tests in our lives to see how we behave. So we looked at last week and we saw how there again Abraham was confronted with a test. And what does he do? Once again he tells his wife to say, you are my sister. Because why? He looked at the men and he said to the men, he looked at them and he said, well, you know, these men do not fear Yahuwah. So because they do not fear Yahuwah, they are going to want to take my wife. So it's better I just say she's my sister. Then they don't have to kill me in order to be able to take her. So let me just say she's my sister. But don't worry about the fact that in chapter 17, chapter 15, chapter 18, chapter, um, in those three chapters, he has cut covenant with him. In chapter 15, he cut covenant with him. In chapter 17, he changes his name and he tells him that he is going to be able to bear a child. In chapter 18, he appears to him in person and tells him that he is going to be able to um, have a son and Sarah is going to fall pregnant. But you see, this is what fear does and especially when we have the fear of man. When we have the fear of man, we will bow our knee to the world's system and to the world's ways because we fear people. And this is where we are right now, being tested like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Are we going to bow down to a world system? Are we going to bow down to what the world's leaders are telling us? This one world um, organization that's coming together. This world hell organization that's coming together that is wanting to dictate to us the way things need to be. Or are we going to be like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego that is going to say, well, you know what? I am not going to bow down to the system and if I must be put in a fire, I will be put in a fire. But I'm not going to bow down to a system. I'm not going to bow down to what this system wants to offer me because I'm not going to fear. You see, fear is the order of the day. Now there is a new variant again, fear to grip the hearts of the people, to go a little bit deeper into their system so that they can come and take over your temple. Because they don't want Abba Yahuwah to be the one who's going to reign and rule in your temple. No, no, no. They want to alter your DNA so that who is going to dwell there? So that Hasatan can be the one seated by changing the makeup, the very essence of who we are in our DNA. Abba's name is written on our DNA and Hasatan wants to come and alter that. By giving us a way of escape. But the way of escape will end in death. And so you see, this is what fear does. And so we look at this and we understand that we know different to Abraham. Abraham feared what was coming his way. He feared death. And because of this, he didn't even trust the words that the Father has spoken. How many promises do we have of the Father? How many promises do you have of the Father that he will take care of you, that he will see you through, that he will be there with you? But when the time comes, will we fear? Because we are in this nation on the verge of where it's already starting to be documented, already spoken in the airwaves about mandatory, that word mandatory, mandatory, a mandatory sting because most of us do not want to conform to this thing. What will we do? So today I don't just want to present to you a teaching. I want you to be able to understand where we are. And to understand that prophetically we are reading things and we are studying things because the Father is opening up to us in our own lives that we must understand that we are the temple. 
And are we going to stand in the hour that we are in? So you see in Luke 12 verses 4 to 5 it says, Who are we to fear? We have to learn to fear Yahuwah. Because he has the authority to cast us into the lake of fire. The biggest problem that we have today is the fact that we do not fear him. Because you see, we don't respect him. We don't honor him anymore. This is the problem. We have made him a friend and we have said he's love. And because he's love, he's not going to do anything to us. Well, I tell you, there's consequences to everything that we go through. And so... In this story last week, we saw how beautifully that even though um, Abraham was not going to do what he needed to do in terms of tell the truth, he sort of like gave a little bit of a lie because of fear, but he protected Sarah and he protected Abraham and he appeared to Abimelech in a dream and tells him, you do not touch that woman because or else he would kill him. And by this time, there's already a plague that has hit them, where their women are not falling pregnant and that there is a plague. And interesting how Abimelech has to actually, Abraham has to pray for him. And this is the first time where we see that Father has called him as a prophet. So Father has raised up Abraham as a leader for him. And so... In the midst of this, we see that even in our sinful way, Father is still helping us to be able to make sure that we will fulfill the purposes and the plans that he's got for us to fulfill. And so, like I said last week, how faithful is our Father, that even though you might fall and even though you might stumble, dust yourself off, get up, Continue to walk and the Father will take you on the path and the journey that he's got for you. And he will bring his purposes and plans to, to fruition in your life. And so today we continue with our story and we look at um, Genesis chapter 21. And in Genesis chapter 21, now finally the promise is unfolding. And Yahuwah visited Sarah as he had said, and Yahuwah did for Sarah as he had spoken. So Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the appointed time. Make a note of that in your Bible. At the appointed time of which Allah had spoken to him. So I want you to understand tonight, Father has an appointed time of when he's going to fulfill that promise in your life. Don't you run ahead of him. Don't you stand there and think, oh no, it's too late. You know what, that's it. You know what, it's too late. You see what's going on around you. And you say, oh no, I should have already been out of here a long time ago because look at what's going on now. And look at this. You know what, the father is never late. He's never early. But he is on time. He's appointed time. <laughs> And if he has given you a promise, then he will do it in his time. But you are not to be anxious. You are not to get anxious. You are not to fear that he has, that you have um, lost the plot or that you are too late or that he's too late. He has his appointed time. All he expects you to do is to trust him. Surrender to him surrender that's why we need to surrender that's why I put that whole testimony of the pineapple garden for you to watch because it is important for us to understand when we surrender we give it to the father and we leave it alone and we allow him to have his way no matter what we see go on around us. Sarah was at the place of where she was looking at her body and Abraham was looking at her body and looking at himself and saying, it's impossible now. Impossible. Amazing. When, he, when she gave Hagar to Abraham, 13 years later, then she goes and conceives. 13 years later, 
then she's going to bear a child. 13, almost 14 years later, only then she's going to have a child. But yet, 13, 14 years ago, she was already looking at herself saying, I'm too old. I'm too old to bear a child now. So you see, father still waited. And because you see, he will do the miracle for the glory and the honor of his name. So how do you know how he's going to turn around your situation? Because at the end of the day, he's going to do it for the glory and the honor of his name. He wants to do a mighty work in your, in your life. So that those that are around you, that's what we're going to look at today, will be able to know who he is through what he's going to do in your life. And Abraham called his name and called his name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Yitzhak which means he laughs, which means to laugh, because that is exactly what Sarah did. She laughed when Yahushua, the angel of Yahuwah, stood before her and said, you are going to bear a child. She laughed. And Abraham circumcised his son, Yitzhak, when he was eight, years, eight days old, as Alua had commanded him. So you see, Yahweh see, Abraham being faithful and being obedient to what the father said. Yeah, we see. We see Abraham being faithful. We see him because we saw that in Genesis chapter 17, verses 9 to 10, he made a covenant and he told him. So if we look at Genesis chapter 17 and it says, um, verses 9, and the Lord said to Abraham, as for you, God, my covenant, you and your seed after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you are to God between me and you and your seed after you. Every male child among you is to be circumcised and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall become a sign of the covenant between me and you. And a son of eight days is circumcised by you. Every male child in your generation, he who is born in your house or brought or bought with silver from any foreigner who is not of your seed. So yeah, we see. See, Abraham might sometimes go astray in some things, but we see how he is obedient to the father in the things that the father tells him to do. Yeah, he's obedient. And that's important for us to know. That's important for us to see. And Abraham was 100 years old when his son Yitzhak was born to him. And Sarah said, Alua has made me laugh. Everyone who hears of it laughs with me. So you see, her mourning was turned into laughter. Joy comes in the morning. So even when you've gone through this difficult time, where you've gone through this mourning process, where you've gone through this time of hardship and trial, there is a time when laughter will come once again. And joy and rejoicing will come when Father fulfills His promise. Wow, He's so faithful. And then we rejoice and then we we sing and we rejoice and there will be laughter. So understand, there's a scripture that says, and this too shall pass. So you know what? You must understand, whatever trial, whatever test you're going through, it's only for a season. The problem is we don't always know how long the season is, but it is only for a season. But the season will come to an end and there will be a time of joy. There will be a time of rejoicing. There will be a time of laughter, but it will come with a testimony, which we're going to see tonight. And Sarah and, Ab and, and Sarah said, Alua has made me laugh and everyone who hears of it laughs with me. Now we must understand, Abraham was a hundred years old and a hundred really signifies um, that it is, it is abundant return. Father was giving Abraham an abundant return. It's ten times ten. It's completeness and fulfillment. And there's a hundredfold return. So Abraham was going to get a hundredfold return on the promise that the father had made. 
He didn't know how this was going to be fulfilled. He knew he had the promise, but he couldn't see it in the natural. And how many of you have a promise, but you cannot see it in the natural? In the natural, it seems like it's literally impossible. All I ask you to do is to lay it down. Lay that promise down on the altar. Give it to Abba Yahuwah. Give it to Him. Allow Him to have His way in how He wants to fulfill it in your life. Because He will do it. But in His appointed time. Verse 8. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. Now it's interesting because now. Yeah, it all of a sudden it says. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. Now it doesn't tell us anything there. How old was the child? Why did he have a great feast? What is this about? We don't seem to understand what this is about. But you know, Scripture does give us a little bit of insight. And I do know in the Jewish culture, specifically amongst the Hasidic Jews, they allow the little boys to grow their hair and the little boys grow their hair. And it's so interesting because when you are in Israel, you can't really, sometimes you, you don't know the difference between a little boy and a little girl, except one thing that you will know for definite, because if you're going to look at their faces and their long little hair, you'll see these little boys with long hair, and then sometimes they've even got a little ponytail and the little hair is tied up. The only difference is you will never see a little girl wearing pants. A little girl will always have a little skirt on. And even if she's going to be wearing a little tights or whatever, the little skirt will be able to be there. So you'll never see a little girl that's going to wear a little pair of jeans. So if you're going to see a little boy, the little boy is going to be wearing the little pair of jeans, but he's going to have this long hair. And then when they turn three years old, that's then when they shave their hair and then they leave the little locks on the side. And that's then when there is a initiation, a dedication. And unfortunately, their ritual is quite evil um, I'm not going to go into that right now, but there is with them that at the age of three is the known time. And so we need to go look in scripture and I just want to be able to look at 1 Samuel 1 to see that Samuel himself was actually dedicated at the time and he went into the temple at the time of being weaned. Because remember, if we look at 1 Samuel one from verse 22 let's look from verse 22 and it says but hannah did not go up for she said to her husband when the child is weaned then i shall take him and he shall appear before yahuwah and remain forever there because remember remember hannah was praying and she was weeping before the father because she was barren. And then when Eli came to her and he said to her, then she said, if the father grants me a child, I will give him to him. I will give him, I will dedicate him to him to be brought up in the temple. And so in verse 23, it says, and her husband, Elikwana, said to her, do what is good. In your eyes, remain until you have weaned him. Only let Yahuwah establish his word. And the woman remained and nursed her son until she had weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bulls and one ephah flower and a skin of wine and brought him to the house of Yahuwah in Shiloh and the child was young. And they slew a bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my master, as your being lives my master i am the woman who stood by you here praying to you to yahuwah i prayed for this young for this youth and yahuwah has granted me what i asked of him so i have also loaned him to yahuwah all the days that he lives he shall be loaned to yahuwah and he worshiped there before yahuwah so you see she was coming up to the temple to do some kind of a dedication to be able to give this child after he was weaned and to dedicate this child. So we see this. Then we look as well and we go look at Second Chronicles 31. You know, because this was really intrigued me. Why? Why? And how do we know at what age it was? So in Second Chronicles 31, look at what it says in verse 16. 
besides those males from three years old and up, who were written in the genealogy they distributed to everyone who entered the house of Yahuwah, his daily portion for the work of his service by his division. So from the age of three, they were then counted. So we understand the, his age. And then I'm going to read, which is really the one who's going to give us the, the real answer that we need. As today I was looking at Maccabees, I just had a look at Maccabees, and in Maccabees chapter 7, it says, from verse 27, so Second Maccabees chapter 7, now you might not have this, um, you might not have this book, it's not in your Bible, but it is in, if you've got a, a good news Catholic Bible with, um, you know, that has the other books in it. It's there and it says, leaning over her son, she fooled the cruel tyrant by saying in her native language, my son have pity on me. Remember that I carried you in my womb for nine months and nursed you for three years. I have taken care of you and looked after all your needs up to the present day. So I urge you, my child, to look at the sky and the earth. So you see there, she Carried him for nine months and then nursed him for three years. So that seems to have been the full time of when they would have then been a little bit more grown up now at the age of three. And so this would, we know, would have now been this weaning and that there was a feast where there would have been some kind of a dedication that would have been done to the father of a feast. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Mitzrayim, from so we are now in verse 9, whom she had borne to Abraham mocking. So she said to Abraham, Drive out this female servant and her son, for the son of this female servant shall not inherit with my son, with Yitzhak. And the matter was very evil in the eyes of Abraham because of his son. So now, can you imagine? This, 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 um, you know, by now, how old is, 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 is um, uh, um, Ishmael? How old is Ishmael now? And now, Abraham has brought him up as his son, is his son. And he has taught him the father's ways and he's taught him many things and he's loved the boy and he's brought the boy up as his own son, teaching him many skills and many things. And now, here is his wife and saying to him, he must go. You see, everything we birth of the flesh is going to cost us a price. So, at that time, Abraham had the authority to say to his wife, No, my wife, that is not what we're going to do. I am not going to sleep with your servant with your servant to bear a child because Abba Yahuwah spoke to me and said, I will have a child with you. Therefore, I am not going to do what you say. But you see, Abraham bowed the knee and he listened to his wife. And this is the this is the problem. Just like Adam listened to Eve and went and ate of the fruit. And so, do you understand? It's going to cost you something in your flesh. And now Abraham is the one closest to this boy. Abraham is the one walking with this boy. Abraham is the one teaching this boy. And now Abraham needs to chase this boy away. So in his eyes, it's an evil thing. And so you must understand today, every single time we birth something of the flesh, it's going to cost us. It's going to be painful for us. There is a price that we will pay in our flesh for the Ishmael that we will birth. It's not that easy. It's not that simple. But Elua said to Abraham, now you see the wife tells him, now the father's got to speak to him because Abraham wasn't going to listen to his wife on this one 
because he saw the matlis being evil. But Elua said to Abraham, let not be evil in your eyes. Let it not be evil in your eyes. Because of the boy and because of your female servant, whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Yitzhak, your seed is called. So you see, sometimes your wife can speak by the mouth of the father. But you need to discern when it is of the father. And what must you do? You need to go back to the father and ask the father, is my wife speaking by the mouth of the father? Because in this aspect, she was speaking by the mouth of the father. But in the previous aspect, she was speaking by the mouth of her satan. So you understand. And that is why I'm saying to you, it is important that we are to be able to discern. And this is where Abraham is going to get himself into trouble. And he gets himself into trouble. Why? He got himself into trouble the first time. And now he's, he's not going to want to listen. And so he saw the matter as evil. But praise the Father that Abba Yahuwah spoke to him. Praise the Father that Abba Yahuwah was able to speak to him and say, the matter is not evil. And so for you men, let this be a, a warning for you today. Let this be for you to understand that sometimes your wife can speak by the mouth of the father. But you need great discernment. You need to have the discernment. You need to have the discernment in you for you to be able to discern. Is your wife speaking by the mouth of the father? Or is this something that is coming from the enemy? And therefore you need to pray and you need to seek the Father. And you need to have a relationship with the Father for you to be able to discern. Is it of the Father or is it not? And verse 13. And the son of the female servant, I also make a nation because he is your seed. So you see, he gives him a promise to say, even though Ishmael is going to go, because he is of your seed, I will also make him a great nation. And so yeah, we see that the father is going to fulfill in this very scripture. He fulfills what he spoke in Genesis chapter 17 verses 20 to 21. Because in Genesis chapter 17, we can quickly look there. Verses 20 to 21, he turns around and he says, And as for, your, and as for Ishmael, I have heard you. See, I shall bless him and shall make him fruitful and greatly increase him. He, sh he is to bring forth 12 princes and I shall make him a great nation. But my covenant I establish with Yitzhak, whom Sarah is to bear to you at this appointed time next year. And then in verses 16, 12, 10 to 12, he turns around and he says, And the messenger of Yahuwah said to her, I am going to increase your seed greatly, too numerous to be counted. And the messenger of the Yahuwah said to her, See, you are conceiving and bearing a son, and shall call his name Yishmael, because Yahuwah has heard your affliction. And he is to be a wild man, his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him, and dwell over against all his brothers. So you see, there was already a promise made. There was already a promise that was made. And Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water which he gave to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, also the boy, and sent her away. And she left and wandered in the wilderness of Besheba. Now, that can't be easy. Can you imagine how difficult that must have been for Abraham? This boy is his son. He has brought him up. For 13, 14 years, he's brought him up, and now he must let him go. And the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat down about a bow shed away. For she said, let me not see the death of the boy. And she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. And Elua heard the voice of the boy. And the messenger of Elua called to Hagar from the heavens and said to her, What is the matter with you, Hagar? Do not fear. For Elua has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Amazing. You see, already yeah, even though Ishmael is not the promised child, 
but he has been brought up by the hand of Abraham. And he has learned to call on the name of Yahuwah. And he has learned to turn to Yahuwah for help. And even Hagar, the last time she was crying in the wilderness, did the father not have sent a messenger to her to help her? Yes, he did. And Yah, look at what he says, do not fear for a has heard the voice of the boy where he is. So he was crying out to Yahuwah and the father heard his voice. But what does he say? Do not be afraid. So he will answer in that time of need. When you cry out to him, do not fear. He sees and he hears and he will answer. Arise, lift up the boy and hold him with your hand, for I make a great nation of him. You see, how many times has the father said, I make a great nation of him? So how many times has the father spoken that even to Ishmael, he's going to make a great nation of him? Understand, he still came from, he was still part of Abraham's seed. Even though he came by a detour that, you know, it was birthed from the flesh. But at the end of the day, Father's not surprised by our detours that we make. And Father says, all things work together for good for those that love me and are called according to his purpose. So he can work all things together for good. So even this, which once again, Abraham has birthed out of the flesh. Father will turn it around and still use it for good. And he's still going to use it for his glory. And Elua opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. And she went and she filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. And Elua was with the boy and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. He became a bowman. So he went into the wilderness of Paran and there he became a bowman an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Mitzrayim. So you see, he didn't, she didn't give it, she didn't take for him a wife from the Canaanites. She didn't take for him a wife that came from the, 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 the Philistines or any of those other people in that, in that, that, that vicinity and that area. She went to Mitzrayim and took a wife for him, for, for him from the origin of where he came from, which was Mitzrayim. That's why Abba Yahuwah says, Mitzrayim, my people, they are my people. Because from here, how many times does Egypt re feature in the Bible? I mean, if we take Joseph himself, went into Egypt, Egypt became the great nation that was feeding the nations of the world. And Joseph would have married an Egyptian woman and then brought him two children. So you see, somehow, Mitzrayim appears, and it's important. Yahushua himself, where did he go? When he had to hide for the two years, he went and hid in Mitzrayim. So, Egypt has a place to, a part to play. And that is why there is a promise for Egypt. Where Abba Yahuwah says, Yitzhak was his promise, was his inheritance. The inheritance came via Yitzhak. So Israel is my inheritance. But Egypt, Mitzrayim, on my people. And it came to be at that time Abimelech and Pichol, the commander of his army. So Abimelech is who? He's the sovereign. This was the sovereign of Gerer that we saw in the previous chapter. And Pichol, the commander of the army, spoke to Abraham, saying, Allure is with you in all that you do. Okay, now. This is so significant. So you see, 
even in again, Abraham doing his little detour, well, his little disobedience in telling Abimelech that um, he, uh, Sarah was his sister, but in everything that the father orchestrated there in Gerer, what did the father say to that man in chapter 20, verse 7, and now return the man's wife? Chapter 20, verse 7, for he is a prophet, and let him pray for you, and you live. But if you do not return his, uh, her, know that you shall certainly die, you and all that are yours. So you see, even in this aspect, what is the father doing? The father is revealing himself as the great I am, and the real, true, living Alua, Yahuwah of Abraham to the nations that now they can actually say Allah is with you in all that you do so you see by this time they have seen how this man a hundred years old and his wife who is 90 is giving birth to a child so what is the father doing in this time, Father is revealing himself to be able to show himself to the nations around. So understand, your story is not finished. And that which you think is late, and the Father is working on a plan. Why? Because he is wanting a testimony out of your life. And that's what we need to understand. So even in the circumstance of where we think Father is late, you must understand Father is working on a mighty testimony that he wants to be able to do through your life. And that is why he will orchestrate all things. So that it's not about you getting any glory. It's about him getting all the glory. So you see, by this time, Abimelech and even his commander is now starting to understand that Alua is with, with Abraham in all that he does. He sees Father's hand in his life. My question to you is this. Can people see the Father's hand in your life? Can people see that you are a child of the Most High in that which they see in your life? Can they see that Abba is with you? Can they see Abba's hand in your life? And it's not just because he's got to prosper you, but it's because they have to experience it in your life and see it in your life. And now swear to me by Alua not to be untrue to me, to my offspring or to my descendants, do to me according to the loving commitment that I have done to you, to the land to which you have dwelt. Now listen to what he says. And now swear to me by Alua. Sure. Abimelech is now speaking. So no, Pikol is now speaking. And listen, by this time, they are understanding the Alua of Abraham. And they already mentioning, swear by Alua, because they've come to see his greatness. And Abraham said, I swear. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of a well of water which Abimelech's servants had seized. And Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this deed, neither did you inform me nor did I hear hear until today. So you see, look at the respect that Abimelech has for that these men that are standing before him. Look at the respect that they have for Abraham. So you see, sometimes you have to go through the hardships and through the difficulties so that the Father can reveal himself in you, so that people can see that Abba Yahuwah is with you. And that they will fear Abba Yahuwah that is within you. So it says, and Abimelech said, so Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this deed. And in verse 27, so Abraham took sheep and cattle and gave them to Abimelech 
and the two of them made a covenant. Now, interesting. Didn't Abimelech also give him sheep and cattle? He gave him, he, he didn't leave empty handed. Because if we go and look, if we go look just the chapter before, we, we look and we see that just in the chapter before, yeah, he turns around and says, Abimelech in verses 14, and Abimelech took sheep and cattle and male female servants and gave them to Abraham, and he returned Sarah, his wife, to him. So now, it's almost like, I'm going to be even with you now. I'm going to give you cattle. I'm going to give you sheep. And he gives him. And Abraham said, Seven ewe lambs of flock by themselves. And Abimelech said to Abraham, What are these seven ewe lambs which you have set by themselves? And he said, Take these seven ewe lambs from my hand to be my witness that I have dug this well. So you see, Abraham is in a position that he's saying whatever he's going to get, he doesn't just want to get something, he's going to pay for it. So that we must understand this is very important because as we come down the line, as we are going to understand when we come with the dividings of land, which I heard just today, a few days ago, that the Pope has spoken and he wants to divide. Now it's time to divide the land of Israel. It's time to be able to do this um, accord of the division of the land we need to understand this this well still stands today in Besheva I was there just as we came into the land just as we you know as we came to live in the land in March of 2018 father took us it was the first time I'd been to Israel so many times since 2006 I'd been going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards to Israel I'd never been to Abraham's well and this was the first time that I went to Abraham's well and wow it is a massive well still today it has a lot more water in it obviously when it is the raining seasons but it is still a well that stands there today and that Besheva is called the well of sevenfold oath. So it is the well of sevenfold oath. As it was, he gave seven ewes. And Abimelech said to Abraham, what are these? And he said, take these seven ewe lambs from my hand and be my witness that I have dug this well. And so he called the place Besheva. Besheva. It's Besheva, because the two of them swore an oath there. Thus they made a covenant at Besheva, and Abimelech rose with Bichol, the commander of his army, and they returned to the land of the Philistines, and he planted a tamarisk tree in Besheva, and there called on the name of Yahuwah, the everlasting owl. And where the, where the actual well is, Today, there is a tree that is there, and that well still stands today. That well is still there today. And Abraham sojourned in the land of the Philistines many days. And so, here we see the story as the most important thing I truly believe that the Father wants us to see in this, is the fact that Abraham was now being recognized amongst his peop his neighbors, amongst the sovereigns in this land, and is establishing himself and is taking ground. He didn't just get the well for free. He made sure he paid for that well. He dug the well. Abimelech's men took the well, and now he paid for the well. And he said, the well is mine. And this is what we need to understand because Father will make sure that he's going to give Abraham the land that is his land and it's the land of his inheritance. But the most important thing that the Father is doing while he's working with Abraham is making his name great through Abraham. That is what is important. So praise Abba Yahuwah for his faithfulness in this message. In what Abba is showing us, let us pray. Abba Father, I just want to thank you, Father, for this message. I just want to thank you for your faithfulness, my King. And I just want to thank you for where you reveal yourself 
and to those who cry out on the name of Yahuwah, they will be saved. That even as Ishmael was crying out on the name of Yahuwah, you heard and you supplied the water that he needed for him not to die. Father, how many times did you say that you would also make him a great nation? And yeah, we see the promises fulfilled. But the most important thing is at the appointed time. Father, how amazing it is that Abimelech, even through again, through Abraham's disobedience, Abimelech is coming to know who you are. He's coming to be able to look up to the Yahuwah of Abraham and knowing that he is a faithful Yah and he sees how you are with him and that he's blessed in everything that he does. And Father, now we see how Abraham pays even for a well that is the land. But yet, Abba Yahuwah, they want to divide that land. And that is your land. And you got Abraham to walk out that land. You told him to walk it out from the river Nile to the river Euphrates. That was the land that you demarcated. That was the land that you gave. But today... All we have is a speck of dust in comparison. It's a little portion only in comparison to the huge land that you have given. But I thank you, Father, because the promise is there that you will have a people that are going to inhabit that land and you will make sure that the full land that you have promised we shall inherit and you will gather us from the four corners of the earth and you will bring us back to the land that is our inheritance and where we belong. And so we have a vision, Father. Just like the promise that you made with Abraham, we have a promise of a land that is the promised land that you have given us because we too are the sons and daughters of Abraham. And we too are part of the covenant that you have made with the house of Israel, because we are grafted in. And I thank you, Abba Father, for Yahshua, who was the perfect lamb that was slain, so that we now may be those that are grafted into the covenant that was made from the beginning. And I thank you, Father, that as we walk out through this Bible, this foundations that we see, and we have a deeper revelation and understanding of who you are and how you reveal yourself and your faithfulness. And when you said to Hagar that you will make him a great nation, you are faithful. You didn't allow him to just die in the wilderness. You came and you said, do not fear. Abba, I pray that in the hour that we are in, that we will be those that as we cry out to you, Father, that we need not fear. Because like Esther said, if I perish, I perish. But she was willing to stand before the king on behalf of her people. And so we are to fear you, Abba Yahuwah, more than we fear man. And help us in the hour that we are in to be able to understand that the only knee that we will bow is to you and you alone. And the only one that we fear is you and you alone. We will not bow to man and man's agenda and we will not bow to the arm of the flesh. But we bow to you and we fear you. And teach us, Abba, what that looks like and what that, is, what, what that is and how to go about doing that. So I thank you for this teaching, Father. I thank you for your word and for you coming to be able to reveal your heart to us in a deeper way. I praise and I thank you for this in Yahushua's name. Amen.